Hi, this is Dr. Ronald Hoffman with what I think serves as a classic case study in double standard. And it has to do with fish oil. Now we've long suspected that fish oil could be beneficial for the heart. In studies of uh, the Inuit, uh, the Eskimos of uh, Canada and Alaska, it uh, serves a protective factor against cardiovascular disease. It's virtually unknown in those populations that consume lots of oily fish and blubber rich in omega-3. Fast forward to research that shows that fish oil lowers triglycerides, it keeps platelets from sticking together, it has an anti-inflammatory effect on the arterial walls, uh, and it may also have uh, an antiarrhythmic effect, reducing the chances of atrial fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. And uh, more and more studies uh, supported the use of fish oil until recently when uh, there was a big turnaround and all of a sudden uh, we saw press reports that uh, oh don't bother to take fish oil, uh, the studies uh, aren't panning out uh, and we saw this rather uh, strident uh, op-ed in uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, if you can see it here, another nail in the coffin of fish oil supplements. Whoa, that's a pretty strident headline for uh, a respectable medical journal. Uh, they're going a little over the top there, don't you think? They, they probably wouldn't write a headline, another nail in the coffin of statin drugs, because some studies suggest that statin drugs don't work uh, in individuals over 75. In fact, very little beneficial effect, and maybe an increase in the risk of dying. But no, uh, fish oil is the target. And they say, the findings are just the latest to cast doubt on the usefulness of fish oil supplementation for cardiovascular disease. So um, I guess that means that JAMA won't be accepting advertisements for a pharmaceutical drug uh, released by uh, Amarin Pharmaceuticals, the makers of Vasipa, which is uh, a pharmaceutical version of fish oil, uh, 1,000 milligrams of EPA, uh, the recently in a study was shown to reduce cardiovascular disease risk by 25%. So uh, how do you reconcile those findings? When fish oil is a supplement, oh, another nail in the coffin. But when it's a pharmaceutical drug released by uh, Amarin, oh, by the way, on the day of the release of this uh, study data, uh, the stock went up 300%. So uh, <laughs> I think we're in the midst of a little bit of a paradox here when fish oil as a nutritional supplement is panned, whereas fish oil as a drug is promoted. And oh, by the way, uh, what will be the cost of Vasipa for a 120 uh, count bottle? Uh, you need four capsules per day, so that's a month's supply. Uh, on average, that retails for about $311. Now, you'll probably get uh, some reimbursement from your insurance company, uh, but be sure uh, that you're going to have a hefty copay as a consumer. Uh, by comparison, uh, 120 count bottle of uh, fish oil by Carlson, uh, I believe the brand is Elite EPA, 1,000 milligrams, the very self same amount of EPA that proved so beneficial in the studies. Uh, that'll set you back $68 a month, $311 versus $68. But of course, since it's a pharmaceutical drug, it's gonna be embraced by Medicare, the insurance companies, and we're off to the races. So here we have a classic double standard when it applies to nutritional supplements. I'm Dr. Ronald Hoffman, and this is Intelligent Medicine.